My great grandfather moved down here with his family from Georgetown, South Carolina to start his own business. Um, he was working for relatives in Georgetown. He moved down here and he was a timber rider. And in a very short period of time, accumulated 50,000 acres of land that spans from the south side of Jacksonville almost to the intercoastal waterway. The property itself has had a number of uses over the years. It originally started out as a timbering business and then also they would gather the rosin out of the trees and make turpentine that was used for shipbuilding and, and other types of industry. The, the seven, seven brothers, brothers right there, all dressed up in coats and ties. My father was Arthur Chester, and I'm sure he was named after the president when they're Chester Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> well, the oldest one was Bright, and then Ben, and then Dick, Ulysses, Chester, Walter, and Forrest. They lost their parents at an early age, and they had to come together to continue to live and to operate a business. So that's where the seven comes from in Seven Pines. I think that the pine tree part of it not only was the source of their livelihood, but also represented Northeast Florida. It represented the strength of the pine tree and the resources of that pine tree provided. You know, they grow strong, they grow tall. Well, the older brother took care of all those children, you know, and not only did he raise them, but then he sent them all to college. He didn't go to college, but he made sure that all the boys went to college. That was a miracle within itself to have seven boys staying in a house, and they were devilish. <laughs> <laughs> it was a miraculous Feet. I mean, when my grandfather and his six brothers ended up going out of the turpentine and timber business, they had railroads, they had tugboats, they had barges. I mean, it was a significant business here in the city of Jacksonville. In the 1960s, my father and my uncle Brightman moved our dairy out here. It was called Meadowbrook Farms Dairy and it operated for about 20 years to the early 80s. And then the last thing we do and still do today is manage timber. The fun part was that all the brothers loved to hunt and this is where they hunted deer and turkey and all and they had a place called He Otter Club. So when they got through hunting, that's where they went to skin the deer and to tell tall tales. All of them could tell big tales about all the hunting. <laughs> he oughta, because the men said, the wives always said, he oughta do this and he oughta do that. <laughs> when I was a child, of course, I was the only girl, so my dad had taken my brothers hunting all the time. So he said, well, I want you to go hunting. So I got up at the crack of dawn, came down here, cold as it could be. We saw some turkeys sitting out there and I got my gun up, which I hadn't shot really too much, and shot and killed two turkeys with one shot. <laughs> so I got my picture taken. <laughs> We all had our birthday parties out here. We bring our friends out here. We have church gatherings here. It's just a place where people enjoy coming together. And the great thing about it is that you come out here, everybody's relaxed, everybody's themselves. There's tremendous conversation among people and everybody's smiling. You know, it's, it's hard not to enjoy this place. It was a real uh, privilege for me to grow up in, in such a family that uh, value those traditions of coming together and whether we're having Thanksgiving and meals together or hunting and fishing together um, and, and even doing business together as Ned and I do now and all our cousins. So it's been a, it's been a great tradition, a great ride. 
I would hope that, you know, that this community could continue this legacy of gathering and Thanksgiving. And one of the fun things that we always did is we have a hayride for the small children. And it's just, just to see the smiles on their faces and the, how much fun they have when they go on those hayrides. You know, we've, I've known this kid since he was born, you know, and his parents were like parents to me. And the family's a support system for me, you know. I know I can always count on the on someone in my family. And to add to that, if you can get people together and get them outdoors, if that's one thing I could encourage anybody else to just not sit in your house, if you can't get outside, doesn't matter how big a patch of grass it is or um, a lake of water, just get outside, get together and do things outside together. That's what I'd like to see. We all owe so much gratitude to the seven, the seven pines that um, kept this land intact and were able to pass down to the next generations. But that legacy is carried down through four generations. Every Thanksgiving, before it's time to, to eat, Chip will make a roundup call and get everybody into, into one giant circle out in the middle of the field here. That's usually the chance where Chip has people announce any new additions to the family, uh, you know, new, new, new babies being born, new engagements, or even people that, that are passing on and leaving this world. We have a head count. We go in a circle like when we're little kids and you, you, you announce your number and, and it's, it's really, it's so big a circle, it's hard to hear the number. So you're counting on the guy next to you saying the right one so that we'll get it right. But we count off, we get a head count, and then Chip leads us in grace. And we give thanks to God for everything and everybody that we have and the gathering we're having that day. Faith is, is number one. Faith in, faith in God. And we're here to honor uh, Him and each other every time we, we gather. I get emotional because it's a big deal. You definitely hit a, a great spot, probably the number one spot. This being our largest, last piece of undeveloped property, we were very anxious to spend a good deal of time and research to get quality developers, to get developers that appreciated the land, developers that would build the right quality of homes, create the right neighborhoods. And we went through an extensive process to do that. And from a number of those proposals, we selected a partnership with ICI and David Weekly Homes. And, you know, we're just excited about what they've created. I think Seven Pines is going to be a great place for families because there's so much heritage here that almost begs people to embrace the family unit. And I think that the way that it's designed with a lot of houses having front porches, that was done intentionally. So people are living out in front of their house as opposed to behind their house. And we're hopeful that folks will embrace that and it'll just bring people together. And there's a lot of biking paths, riding paths, you know, opportunities in the Central Park for people to gather. And I just feel like that all of those things are being done to promote family and to promote gathering. I think the opportunity to connect the present with the past is huge. And I think that's what, when we talked to the ICI weekly team, you know, our main emphasis was let's, let's connect the past to the present. And so that's what we're trying to do. It all comes together to create that history that reaches to the present. My mother wrote a letter to the three of us, Chester and Brightman and me, and the last sentence was, please keep the family together. So it, it was just an important thing for us to have the family always coming together. I just think it's that the families that move here, hopefully they will have strong family ties too. I just feel like that's an important thing in life, that we stay together and, and keep families together.